The big question most everyone has, including me, is where to go to find gold. And the answer to that question is where it's been found before. And you're wondering, where has it been found before? And the answer to that question is research. And that's what this video is about. Now in this video, I'm going to be given methods of mining and dates and all that. And that's going to pertain to mining in California because that's where I'm at. That's what I know. Uh, the mining in different states is going to be fairly similar. The dates are going to be different. The methods may vary a little bit, but it's the same general rules the, the, that you need to answer, the same questions that need to be answered will all aid you in locating a, a good spot to prospect. Now, when you want to research an area, there's five basic questions that you need to answer. Number one, when was gold discovered in this area? How long did they work in this area? The type of equipment they used while mining the area and the size and quantity of gold that they recovered from the area. And last, but uh, fairly important, is was this area reworked in the 30s or later? These are all important questions that you have to answer to, find, to do your research properly. If the area you're looking at was discovered and worked in the beginning of the gold rush in 1848 to 5051. It may have been worked fairly quickly and not very thoroughly. The first miners to work the rivers were little more, they had little more than a pick and shovel and a gold pan. The basic essentials to live were hard to come by. There were, very, there were very few roads and even less gold mining gear. Or during this time, there were a lot of new and rich discoveries. The miners would be enticed to richer diggings rather than work out the area that they're in. A lot of these areas were later covered with tailings from future mining, so the gold is still there. By 1851, there was a lot more miners in California, and they had much better equipment available to them. In most cases, the rocker box had been replaced with the long tom. Uh, rather than the individual miners working a, a claim, miners now had to form small groups uh, to work the long tom. This enabled them to, to move much more gravel than they could before and, uh, and results was they, they could be a lot more efficient. And uh, this enabled them to, to clean the area a lot better than they, they could as individual miners. By 1853, uh, pretty much all the easy surface gold uh, had been recovered. Um, the, between 1854 and the 1880s, uh, most of the mining in California was done by large companies. The miners were now just wage earners. Um, they just worked uh, the, for the company. With the discovery of hydraulic mining during this period, uh, the the mining completely changed. They were able to, to wash away entire mountains. And a lot of the rivers were filled in with tailings uh, off of these operations, which uh, is a benefit for us now because it capped off what gold was left in the river, plus it added gold that they didn't recover uh, to the river. As a general rule, the shorter the time the miners were in the area, the better. 
The length of time the miners were in the area will give you clues to how rich the area was and how hard they had worked it. During the gold rush, the miners had to find a lot more gold to survive than we do today. An area that wasn't producing enough gold in 1850 would be considered rich today. Sometimes when the miners were working in an area, they would hear of a rich strike not too far away. A lot of them would just pick up and go. They would leave a lot of unprocessed gravel and gold would be left behind. If an area you're looking at has just a few pile of rocks here and there and not much more, they probably weren't there very long. Researching the area will give you clues to why they left. Was it not enough gold or were Richard Diggings discovered five miles away? Now if the area you're looking at has acres of, of tailings and miles of flumes, you can be sure they were there for a long time. Now if they were there for a long time, they had to be getting gold. What research in the area will tell you is how much gold they got and why they quit. Now if they worked the area for a long time, the odds are they probably worked it pretty hard. When they had a lot of time and money invested in the area, they're going to get as much as they can out of it. In a lot of the large diggings that they worked for several years, after the miners left, the Chinese would move in. The Chinese were very good and very meticulous about their mining. They didn't leave much. The different methods of mining they used uh, will give us a good indication to how well they worked the area and how much gold they recovered. If all they used were uh, gold pans and rocker boxes, they probably just grabbed what was easy and moved on. In, uh, they spent months building flumes and investing a lot of time and money in an area. They probably uh, uh, worked it a lot harder and they probably had much better gold recovery equipment. Now as the time went on during the gold rush, uh, the recovery equipment became much better and the miners learned a lot and became much better. And the better they became equates to the more gold they recovered and the less gold we're going to find. Knowing the size and quantity of gold they recovered will, will uh, aid you greatly when you go to prospect an area. A uh, good example is if uh, you discover most of the gold they recovered from the area was very fine, you will know to bring equipment capable of keeping fine gold and you'll also know that that's probably all you're going to find in that area. Now on the other hand, if uh, the area all they recovered was coarse gold, um, you, will, you know you can process the gravel a lot quicker because you don't have to worry about losing the fine gold and you know that not every pan will have gold in it. A good example is uh, about three miles from my house or so, there's a very large gold field. Uh, they recovered thousands of ounces, but most all of it was flower gold, 40 to 100 mesh. They were able to recover the fine gold because the dredge had the ability to screen it several times and use mercury plates to recover it. Knowing this, I know it would be a waste of time for me to go down there with a sluice box and try to recover gold. So the, the research keeps me from wasting my time looking for gold in an area that had gold, but uh, there's no way I can recover it with the, the equipment I have. In the Great Depression of the 30s, a lot of people had a renewed interest in the gold fields. 
Uh, work was hard to come by and there was no welfare state then. Uh, mining was a, uh, a, a way to make a living. It had a, a cheap startup cost. Uh, you camped in the woods so there was no uh, uh, rent to be paid. A lot of people uh, started mining during this period. Uh, my grandfather was one of them. Um, trying to determine if an area was mined in the 30s is a difficult thing to do. As you move forward in time, the mining records get harder to find. In the 1800s, you had mining districts, government agencies, tax collectors, geologists, all keeping records. In the, uh, in the 30s, um, there was, these records weren't kept. In fact, uh, most of the gold finds, uh, the people wanted to keep them quiet because they got a better price for the gold on the black market. Um, the beginning of World War II, uh, most all the mining came to a halt at that time. In the uh, early 1960s, um, recreational gold mining started to take hold. With the portable suction dredge becoming more available, there was a renewed interest in the gold fields. That uh, interest is still going today. I have found the easiest way to determine if uh, an area was worked, reworked in the 30s is to uh, locate any areas uh, suitable for camping and then check those areas for trash. Um, in the 1800s, they left very little trash. In the 1930s, you will find a lot of canned, empty cans. Um, and it's, it's really easy to tell the difference between an 1800s can and a 1930s can. The 1800 can will be mostly rusted away and there's a lot of solder on the cans. It's, it's very uh, prevalent on an, on an old can. And on the new cans, there is no solder. Now another method is to check with the county recorder uh, to see if the area has been claimed, when it was claimed, um, if the claims were kept up. Um, the problem with this though is it just tells you if it was claimed. It really doesn't tell you about any work that has been done on, on the claim. Um, and then, you know, moving forward in time, you get into the 60s, Basically, the only way you're going to know is word of mouth. Um, if there's any old miners in the area that you can talk to to find out if this, if this uh, section you're interested was reworked in the, the 60s and, and later. It really doesn't matter uh, where you're prospecting. Uh, it could be in Alaska, Arizona, in the desert, in the rivers. Um, it really doesn't make a difference as far as your research goes. The research is going to result in more gold over the long run. Now for me, the research is as much fun as the mining itself. Um, I'm a bit of a history buff and so to me it's kind of like a, a treasure hunt. You're, you're gleaming small bits of information here and there, you put together a plan and then you get to go uh, see if it produces any results. Um, now I do most of my research uh, during the winter because uh, there's not a whole lot else to do. Uh, so to, to pass a cold rainy evening, uh, thinking about mining next summer works real well for me. Now you'll discover the more researching you do, the better you're gonna get at it. And uh, the more history you learn, the more gold you're gonna find. Now, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way, when I put out my next video, you'll get a notification that uh, I finally got around to doing something. Till then, you have a wonderful day. Que nunca jamás descubriré Crees que